Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one lined up for you today. Lots to talk about, and it's getting pretty, pretty cool, the stuff that we're going to talk about today. No, it's not price. People are saying we may not have hit the bottom yet when it comes to crypto market. But you know what? There's a DC insider that's a former Ripple employee. This is the next two weeks could be very important on the Hill with Congress and crypto. Why don't we just roll that beautiful intro? This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradley above at the top of the screen. Everything that we're talking about here today, $1.279 trillion for the crypto market cap. It is unimpressive. Right. And right now we're seeing a little bit of gains on the day, whether it's Cardano at 11.55 percent on a 24 hour Bitcoin at 6.4 percent, Ethereum almost 9 percent gains on the 24 hour and XRP up 5.71. It was 6 percent on this morning video. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the range right now for XRP. Ranging on the low end at 52.23, ranging on the high end at 56.12. We're currently sitting at 0 0.5580. There you have it. Numbers are brought to you by iTrust Capital, ladies and gentlemen, the best crypto gold silver IRA. And if you have a crypto IRA with someone else, you can move it for free to iTrust. And the gains are ridiculous. Check it out. Tax-free, tax-deferred. CNBC, Bitcoin mining isn't nearly as bad for the environment as it used to be. Mm, 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 mm. Where to begin? All right, look, uh, we have seen a major push from China to squash Bitcoin mining. A lot of that has come to the United States. Uh, we covered a graph or a chart not long ago, maybe last week or the week before, that said a good portion of the mining has really uh, migrated to the U.S. from China. I do not think is it, it is an accident that as the Chinese government gets closer to a full implementation of their central bank digital currency, the digital yuan, I do not find it an accident that they want to squash Bitcoin mining. I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. Now, with that being said, the mining that has moved to the U.S., I would imagine will be under, hopefully, much more strenuous regulations that really make sure that Bitcoin mining is more energy efficient using renewable, sustainable energy. One thing I would like to get rid of is carbon credits because carbon credits is basically, well, I'm just going to be a pay a fine and it says that I'm carbon net neutral when I'm actually not. I've just paid enough money to say that I am. That doesn't work for me either. But nevertheless, there's quite, quite a few comments down here that just really attack Bitcoin for not being a viable payment system, which is true. And unless that changes... That is what you need to know about Bitcoin. It is not a payment system. People see it as a digital gold store of value, which makes me uncomfortable. But nevertheless, I see huge investment firms taking huge positions with Bitcoin on their books. And that tells me whether you like it or not, it's probably going to make it long term. And that's cool. I want everybody to win. I really do. May not sound like it, but I do. Right here, I just don't want to see a bunch of people lose a lot of money. That's what I don't want to see. I don't want to see the tulip craze happen to Bitcoin, but we'll see. Michael Val Five Links is a Hall of Famer. If you're not following him, you should. One crypto sector set to disrupt the entire financial system and global business models, says macro guru Raul Pal. I'm a fan of Raul Pal, Real Vision, Television. Make sure you check him out. And what he's talking about here, I'm not going to read this whole article to you because I've already done it. But this is him talking about the impact of NFTs just for a, an example of a portion of this market that can be hugely disruptive in many, many different areas going beyond just art and intellectual property. And I agree with him completely. I think NFTs are going to be hugely impactful in the entire world uh, where they can find use cases for even going outside of art and intellectual property. But, you know, to that end, I would say that uh, 
we have regulations to deal with, right? And that's what we're waiting for. And in just a second, we're about to get into a whole host of information here from Ron Hammond, who was the original drafter and architect of the Token Taxonomy Act, a former Ripple employee, and he has some very powerful comments for each one of us to hear in just a few seconds here. Really quickly, though, we do want to brush up over this for anyone who's not up to speed what's going on here. Recently, in a separate case with Coin Schedule and the SEC, two SEC chairs, which are you're looking at right here, Hester Pierce and Elad Roisman, had it in them to stand up and issue the clarity in that particular case that, in fact, there is a decided lack of clarity here for market participants around the applications of securities laws to digital assets and their trading. There was many other uh, comments made, but this just sends it home for you here to get everybody caught up to date and how the Howey test to such assets is not crystal clear. So we know that that the SEC now has acknowledged, you know, in another case, at least two of the five chair members that would vote on things have acknowledged that there is no clarity. And yet somehow the SEC is suing Ripple over XRP because they feel in that particular case, they are clear as a bell. This is going to add more problems going forward. We know that the Ripple crew has taken this advantage here and they have immediately moved to dismiss Brad and Chris Larson's case using those comments. I would imagine it will be applied to Ripple at some point in the future here as well. But that's to catch up on the case right now. And July 27th and another six days is when William Hinman is to sit for his deposition. Now, July 28th, we had a deadline issued to the SEC from Elizabeth Warren in Congress responding to Gary Gensler's call to action. Stay with me. We'll be there in just a second. Bank of Korea selects provider for CBDC blockchain simulations. So they're moving forward is what we're talking about right here. And I want to quickly move to this and show you someone else's moving forward, which is the Central Bank of France and Tunisia in a wholesale cross-border CBDC trial. Oh, you're going to want this. The experiment used blockchain-based wholesale central bank digital currency to carry out wire transfers between commercial banks in each country instead of using SWIFT. Things that make you go, hmm. Remember this? We covered this about a week, week and a half ago here. Well, it's July 15th. So there you go. All right. So now looking right here, we see uh, Anya Manuel, who sits as a Ripple board member and an incredible bio. If you haven't looked at it, I would go take a look at it. She's worked with everybody on the planet in government levels and these things. But listen to what she says about correspondent banking and SWIFT. Go off video, but I'm happy to pick up exactly where Sandy left off. Because Perfect. when you're talking about financial inclusion, mobile payments, all of those issues that Sandy was just talking about, China is in the lead. You know, we talk about the tech race with China. In this area, they are just ahead of us. Um, Sandy said that in 2017, something like 22 trillion of transactions were done through mobile in China. Well, last year it was over $45 trillion. That's more than twice as much as when you add up all of the transactions that Visa, MasterCard, and PayPal do. That's an impressive number, by the way. That is just by comparison. So China is clearly in the lead. They've also done, and it's gotten a lot of press recently, they've just rolled out pretty much the first big country uh, digital currency, central bank digital currency, the digital yuan. And it's, it's going pretty well. They've done six or seven million transactions, billions in RMB value. They're still in the testing phase. It's an interesting system that's with financial exactly as Sandy talked about, many, many Chinese have bank accounts, and this is one way to get them into the formal financial system. This being China and an authoritarian country, it also has a little bit of a dark side. So there's no privacy at all. All of the data is centrally controlled. 
And the Chinese central bank now with any transaction with the digital yuan has perfect insight into who is sending what to whom. So that means no dodging the capital controls <laughs> when people are trying to get money out of China. It means that you can discriminate against people if they're not high on this Chinese social credit score, you can surveil them financially, all of those things that in the West we wouldn't really like, but it's moving ahead and it's moving very quickly. And an important piece of this, the China digital yuan, is that it also allows cross-border transactions, so international payments, exactly what we do here at Ripple, without touching SWIFT. Or That's powerful. Listen to what she says here, because this has been a narrative we talk about a lot on this channel, as well as the incentive, the pressure that's being put on the rest of the world by an authoritarian government like China, releasing and moving out and being a first mover advantage here in the digital asset space with CBDCs. The international correspondent banking system. That is super important because through SWIFT, the U.S. and the West has basically had a system in place where if you don't do what we want, Iran or North Korea, you won't have access to the international banking system. People won't bank with you. Well, that is becoming less and less powerful, partly through the digital yuan and partly through other innovations where people are just going around SWIFT because it's slow and inaccurate in all those ways that Monica and Christina are about to talk about in bringing payments out of the digital era. And just a reminder too, you know, it, you know, talking about using the digital wand is one of those assets that they could use to try to bypass the SWIFT uh, wire bank wire bank wire system. And, you know, let us not forget that the BRICS coalition is Brazil, Russia, China, uh, India, and Africa. Right. So that coalition and the strength of the digital yuan, it's not just about China and their forward motion. It's about the impact that they could have serving that coalition as well. Keep listening. But this is a really key point because Ripple is really at the cutting edge of this. So you guys should all be really proud to work here. You know, 75 percent of big global banks, especially U.S. ones, are pulling out of the international correspondent banking system. It's well, there it is. There it is. Seventy-five percent are pulling out. Well, these two banks might be some of that seventy-five percent. That's Anya Manuel from Ripple telling you what the scoop is. Seventy-five percent, and a lot of those are American banks. She said that are looking to pull out of SWIFT. What could replace it? RippleNet. ODL. That's what could replace it. And if you've been in this space long enough, you may feel exactly how, how I do about it. It's going to. Let's take a look here. Elizabeth Warren gives SEC July 28 deadline to figure out crypto regulations from their side of the table. Why? Why July 28th? What's going on? Remember this guy, Ron Hammond. Shout out to Ron Hammond, the architect of the Token Taxonomy Act. And back in 2019, he was said he was excited to announce that as of today, I am a new manager of government relations for Ripple. Thrilled to bring all of my legislative experience, including crafting the Token Taxonomy Act to the team. Special thanks to Michelle Bond and Stuart Alderati for that opportunity. And that is impressive. Remember that he did that when the bill was first introduced under Warren Davidson and Darren Soto, who are still advocating for crypto. And we know here, and by the way, Warren Davidson also a part of the Securities Clarities Act, right, with Tom Emmer and others uh let's see well no uh darren soto i don't know if warren davidson's on that bill but nevertheless take a look down here you see government relations is where ron is now director of government relations to present he spent his time august through may of 2020 there 10 month tenure at the uh ripple uh manager of relations there government relations and then what do we have here well just two days ago he said, this week in Congress and crypto, the sprint to August. 
These next two weeks are some of the busiest days on Capitol Hill, and this also applies to crypto. While many things aren't public yet, and we discussed this about back channels, behind the scenes, right? There is a lot happening behind the scenes that the industry needs to be ready for. Not that may happen, that the industry needs to be ready for. August is reserved for members to return to their respective districts and meet their consultant or constituents, excuse me. Typically, members set deadlines for their legislative projects to be finished before August recess starts. These can be bills, hearings, or letters to agencies. In addition to setting deadlines for legislation, some members use the last week of July to meet with industry leaders to springboard legislative projects, ideas that the staff can begin to work on during the August recess. For crypto, both scenarios are occurring this week. Come on in, Ron Hammond. Since these initiatives aren't public yet, I'll speak at a high level, but I can confirm there is a sprint to get at least one to two more hearings on crypto in before August recess. This is in addition to the CBDC hearing in the House Financial Services Committee next week. On the legislative front, every day this week, we're chatting in person, finally, with members in both chambers on a wide array of topics that they are considering for legislation, including stable coins, ransomware, custody, securities law, securities law, market structure, and DeFi. Finally, the deadline Congress has given regulators, the most notable being Senator Warren's July 28th deadline we just told you about to SEC Chair Gensler to respond to her letter uh, regarding crypto regulation. What the letter says will tee off the staff's work for August. Things in D.C. have been rapidly escalating for crypto, and we will likely see lots of development, some public, others not, in the next two weeks. But know that if the general congressional business heats up, which it always does, then the staff will kick these priorities to September. Shout out to Ron Hammond. That's where we are on this day. We can't forget we're retail investors. We sit at the kids' table, like it or not, don't matter how big your portfolio is, because Ron's on the inside. Right? He's inside the secret dome. And we appreciate you, Ron, very, very much. Taking a look here, trading legend Peter Brandt shares charts showing that Bitcoin may continue declining. Crypto quant data, things do not look good for Bitcoin. Spot reserves on exchanges are increasing. Derivative reserves are decreasing. Stable, record, stable coin reserves are increasing. So there you have it. There may be more downside before we see upside. And that's why we pay so much attention to the fundamental news complemented with technical analysis. That's going to do it for us. This is getting good. This is the kind of stuff I like to hear about. And maybe, just maybe, hey, I'm the eternal optimist anyway. Maybe, just maybe, we will see some kind of legislation that will allow the innovation in this emerging market to absolutely blast off without any more interruptions from the market regulators that oversee it. All right, that's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. I do want to tell you right now, don't forget about it. Link to, they get this legislation in place. This market goes nuts. We all might be accredited investors. How about that one? Make sure you keep an eye out for these things. They do not last long on this platform. If you're not accredited, reach out and contact them. They will help you understand what you need to do to become so. So there it is. I will catch all of you on the next one.